Welcome to Sex Ed with DB. I'm your host, DB. Let's get into it. Let's talk about Future Method's beautiful new glass sex toys. But first, we gotta go back to basics. What even are glass sex toys? Glass sex toys are usually made of body-safe, non-porous, borosilicate glass, the same kind of glass used in lab beakers. It's highly durable and safe. It's not your everyday glass and can withstand extreme temperatures without cracking or breaking. This kind of glass is essential if you're gonna be using glass toys during sex. So why would people use glass toys during sex? A lot of people turn to glass toys because the temperature adjusting surface allows for warm or cold sensations during use, as well as their compatibility with silicone lubricants. This makes them waterproof, perfect for shower play and other water play. They're also extremely hygienic because they're easy to clean, wash, and sanitize. They won't harbor bacteria and they're silicone free. Want to know how to use glass sex toys and what to avoid while using them? Go to futuremethod.com to check out the guide on pegging written by a doctor and anal surgeon. And don't forget to use code SEXEDWITHDB for 15% off at checkout for amazing button gut goodies. Ever since getting engaged to my wonderful fiance, I've been thinking about ways to keep things fun and novel between us, but I, of course, want it to feel organic. I want to be able to feel sexy and comfortable in my body while trying something new. Thanks to Lion's Den, a new adventure I've been exploring is the world of lingerie. I never really was a big lingerie girl myself, but once I started trying on lingerie that accentuated my curves, felt super soft to the touch, and made me look in the mirror and felt wildly confident in my skin, that changed pretty quickly. Plus, when I searched for what I might like on Lion's Den's website, I saw models that actually looked like me. They were curvy and thick and voluptuous, and it made all the difference to see models that have my body type. Want to join me in my new lingerie chapter? Right now, you can use code SEXEDWITHDB for 15% off your purchase in-store and online at lionsden.com. Follow them on social media at Lions Den Adult on IG and TikTok for exclusive offers, deals, and giveaways. How can I choose the right sex toy for me? This is a great question. Is the porn that you watch ethical? Let's find out. What if my partner does not want to use a condom? I love this question. This is Curious Sex Ed. A podcast where two real sex educators answer even realer sex ed questions that you write into us. We believe that curiosity around bodies, relationships, and sexuality is for everyone. Learn with us as we educate about amazing sex ed topics and share juicy personal stories along the way. Want to join our bestie crew to gain access to Curious Sex Ed? Listen to the first three episodes of Curious Sex Ed for free wherever you get your podcast. And tune into the rest of the season exclusively on buymeacoffee.com slash Curious Sex Ed. What is up? I am so excited. Sorry, coming in really hot, but I'm really, really thrilled beyond jazzed even for you to hear this episode with Goody Howard. I I'm so glad that I came across Goody. I was listening to an Evian Whitney podcast episode and I heard Goody Howard on it and was like, I need to know this person. (laughs) She is incredibly dynamic and magnetic and is really a marvel to listen to. And I really know that you will feel the same. Um, I'll let her introduce herself during our interview. But in this episode, Goody and I talk about all things sex ed from her story from being an accountant to a full-time pleasure professional to a sneak peek at Goody's workshop called Lick, which is a workshop for performing oral sex on penises to some really important DEI and sexuality education work that Goody does in corporate environments and college campuses. And we just somehow talk about so much more than that, uh, even though I, I can't even like begin to articulate how wonderful this interview was. So Uh, A couple reminders before you head over to Goody. If you didn't know what Curious Sex Ed is, Curious Sex Ed is hosted by me and by Mariah Caudillo, uh, who runs Sex Ed Files. And we are real sex educators answering even realer anonymous sex ed questions. We believe that curiosity around bodies, 
relationships and sexuality is for everyone. And we want you to learn with us as we educate about amazing sex ed topics and share some juicy personal stories along the way. Uh, So if you want access to all of these wonderful, amazing sex ed uh, episodes through Curious Sex Ed, go on over to buymeacoffee.com slash Curious Sex Ed and you can join our bestie crew uh, for nine bucks a month, which me and Mariah uh, will use essentially for our expertise and for our efforts. Um, I think it's really, really important to talk about how much work sex educators do for free. And if you're listening right now and feel like you've gotten a lot out of this episode, I would love it if you went over to curiousxed.com slash buy me a coffee and you can just buy me one coffee if you are not interested in joining our bestie crew every month. Um, That's totally great. If you aren't into spending any money at all, just share this episode with a friend. If you really, really enjoyed it, uh, it means a lot. Um, Definitely rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, It's a really big deal for us as podcasters to be able to get good ratings and reviews because it really, really helps um, get more people to find us and to listen to comprehensive sex ed. So without further ado, I give you Goody Howard. Hello, Goody Howard. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm really good. I can't wait to chat with you. You're just a ball of light and knowledge, and I'm very excited that you're here today. (laughs) Me too. I'm glad we could get it worked out. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? uh, Tell me a little bit about your work. I know this is going to be hard because you do so many things, but however you describe that. Um, Well, my name is Goody Howard, MSWMPH, and I include that because student loans matter. Um, (laughs) (laughs) My pronouns are she, her, and boss, and I don't code switch and I cuss a little bit. Um, I like to set the expectation early. Um, I am a sex ed superhero and I do pleasure development, professional development and pleasure professional development. Love it. Wow. That is succinct. Even though you do so much, that's really impressive. I've really been working on my elevator pitch. You know, people don't have the attention span that they used to, you know? So then if they're curious about, well, tell me more about pleasure development. Well, what does professional development mean in a context of a sex educator or, you know what I'm saying? So they can ask about what they're interested in knowing before I ramble off about some shit that they didn't even care to know. (laughs) Okay, totally fair. Uh, (laughs) Sex ed superhero. I really like that. I haven't heard that before. When did you start calling yourself a sex ed superhero? Well, actually, that is not a name that I created myself. Um, The folks over at SheVibe did a whole, um, what is it called? Uh, The collector cards, like um, baseball cards. Oh, yes, I remember those. Well, they were called Sex Ed Superhero Trading Cards. And I have a card. Oh, that's so cool. Did they like reach out to you and you're like, um, yes, Yes. of course. I'd love to be involved. They were like, what do you want to do? Um, we want you to be a sex ed superhero. Um, what do you want the aesthetic of your card to look like? Do you want a cape? Do you want to be flying? Or you want to be like Batman? Like, what do you want? And I was like, Well, I love science and ho shit, and I use science to explain pleasure. So I want like a mad scientist vibe. Like I want to be, so on my card, I'm in a lab and I have like a clitoris on a 3D model on the screen. I have like a dildo in one hand and a finger in the other. Um, I have on like the the white coat, but I have on like the the bow tie and the button down shirt, but I got on like shorts and fishnets. And so, (laughs) so that's my card. I'm like the mad scientist situation. So um, they called it sex ed superhero cards, I think. Um, and so that's Amazing. where I got it from. Wow. Incredible. Very cool to be on your own like cartoon superhero card. That must have been really neat. It was super special to me because my dad used to draw um, comic books. Oh, wow. And so um, it was really special to me because like he used to do that for a living. So it was cool. And then my son has the eight by 10 in his room because he thinks that's just He's 19. And, you know, teenagers don't think anything is cool. So, And this happened when he was like 15, I think. And so 
he thought it was just the, the dopest shit he'd ever seen. So he has like the eight by ten in his room, and I signed it and everything. So oh my god, that what a proud son. That's really yeah, really that made me happy because you know teenagers don't like shit. So yeah, what <laughs> like getting any attention from my twenty three year old brother? I'm like, I'll do whatever you say. Like you are, you somehow are just like the epitome of cool to me, yeah. even though you're kind of an asshole. <laughs> just like that's fine. I think that's what they're going for. Is like right. the Gen Z folks like know that they're the shit but like i'm annoyed about it but it's okay because we didn't have at 23 that confidence didn't live in me yet right you it's like maybe their it light came late. on earlier right well we talk about gen z later I'd, I'd love to really know uh your story you said you know you're msw mph sex ed superhero you do pleasure work you you facilitate all these these things but i'm wondering what got you into this work in the first place Oh, uh, well, I have always been the freaky friend, right? Um, I grew up in a sex positive household. It was a body negative household, but it was a sex positive household, which is mm. a unique dichotomy to have. My mom's a nurse, so we learned about sex like very, you know, medicinally, very sterilely. Um, and I think that I've always had the energy that people feel comfortable with asking those kinds of questions about. And uh, I used to do toy parties, which is like Mary Kay for dildos, right? Um <laughs> And so you kind of have to differentiate yourself from the people in your area doing what you do. So I would do like little positions, tips and tricks or little oral sex tips and tricks. And people were like, I pay for this without the toys. And I was like, because I've always been a hustler. You know, like Pharrell said, I'm a hustler, baby. You know, Um, and so that's very much me. I've been a hustler my whole life. And so um, I basically started to flesh out workshops as a result. And so it just kind of just started snowballing and growing. And honestly, I've been doing this work 17 years. Wow. Um, By word of mouth, I didn't get, I've been doing it full time for seven because I used to do accounting. My bachelor's is in business. I've been profitable for the last four. Profitable meaning I make more than I made at my full time job. I made money doing it for the last 17 years, but I made more than I make as an accounting professional in my line of work now. Um, Amazing. And it's just Congratulations. Really interesting to see how it's grown and the different ways I can apply what I do. And it's just, it's, it's a whirlwind and I'm living my dreams. I'm so excited and so grateful because I know everybody can. Yes. I'm incredibly happy for you. I mean, so much hard work, so much creativity, dedication has gone into your career and 17 years full-time for the last seven, making more money than your full-time job for the last four. Like that's very inspirational uh, as someone who's been doing this work for six years and been doing it full time for the last two and Mm -hmm. also been making more money than I was, you know, and I also have my MPH. So go MPHs. Uh, When you got your MSW MPH, was that one program or like, what was that like? So um, I found the Women of Color Sexual Health Network in 2016. And I was like, oh shit, they're making, paying their grown lady bills with sexuality work, right? So I started investigating and asking people like what their backgrounds and their training and stuff. A lot of them had MSWs, a lot of them had MPHs. And so um, I went with an MSW and a grad certificate of public health, right? Oh, cool. While I was getting the grad certificate, the master's program was approved. So I was like, hell yeah, run it, right? So I got a master's of public health. I completed it in May of 2020. I graduated by myself because I was the first human being to get a master's of public health from the University of Texas at Arlington. Wow. Wait, that's amazing. First of all, Con- yeah. congratulations on that. I mean, that shouldn't be the case, right? There should be, there should be other MPHs there, but that well, there, you there paved are. the way. Yeah, yeah. Because the, because the program had not been approved yet. So oh, there got it. So program. it was just, you were right after the program had actually been approved. But I was in class and a public yes. health teacher, the leader of the public health department was teaching a class when she got word that it was approved. And I was okay. like, yep, me. Wow. So, yeah. And then I got it in May of 2020. So to get a public health degree in the middle of a pandemic is a unique and amazing experience because it's you're watching what you're learning in action. Like, it's like, yo. That's when I graduated from my MPH was May 2020. Yes. And, so you know what I'm ve- saying. Yeah, totally understand. And it, it was so, I, I wonder if you felt this way too. Like it was just such a strange experience. Like, first of all, like I didn't walk the stage because mm-hmm. it was COVID. So yeah. like two months of our program, two and a half were completely online and it was just a fucking mess. And it was just 
really wild to have gone through my my program was two years. So doing two years and kind of hearing about all these theoretical pandemics and like ways in which to measure success and protect people and all the trouble and hardship that people go through with different Mm -hmm. cultures and different backgrounds and how to get people to listen to certain science when their social media feeds are so, you know, there's just like so much to it. And that's really cool that we share the May 2020 uh, for better and worse timeline. And I, and I did, I graduated on Zoom too, but they spent like five minutes on me and then they moved on to the Bachelors of Public uh, Health people. Five but, minutes, that's pretty yeah. good though. And and they did, um, they created a Maverick Trailblazer Award in my honor. So um, every year, the first year I got to go uh, give give the award to, to the Masters of Public Health student that they deemed worthy of the award. And so that was really cool too. So I mean like, you know, it's dope to be like a part of history. Wow, that that must have been a really really wild experience. Do you feel like you, you do you feel like you use your MSW and your MPH skills in your workshops and like in all of the things that you do now? Absolutely, my dick sucking class is a public health intervention. <laughs> like correct, I use my my dick riding class is a public health intervention to increase positive sexual health outcomes. Right. And improve relationship satisfaction. Well, that's completely correct. And it should be said like that. And we should be talking about like that in school for sure. And so what I'm doing now, I actually, I've never pitched anything in my career. Anything I've ever done, people have come to me. So 2023 is the year of the pitch. And Mm. so I am pitching um, Sexual Health is Public Health, which is a, a, a lecture that I do. I'm pitching it to the public health departments at colleges. And I have another one called Human Sexuality and Social Work that I'm pitching to the social work colleges because I think it's important for us to understand how the social determinants of health also include sexuality, orientation, and gender expression. Ooh, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Um, like, for, for instance, social work, right? Human sexuality and social work. Social workers typically work for nonprofits and things like that. They serve underserved communities. Um, they have different priority populations. And they address usually negative uh, public health outcomes, right? So if you are a social worker in HIV, you're going to be dealing with sexually diverse, gender and sexuality expansive human beings. Mm. And you need to be able to create a safer space for them. Yes. Right? So a public health people, when we're talking about um, STI and HIV tracking and things like that, the way the tracking is set up is completely wrong. It's like uh, uh, homosexual transmissions or MSM transmissions, men that have sex with men transmissions, right? heterosexual transmissions, whereas if a trans woman is in a relationship with a cisgender man and one of them acquires HIV, it's counted as an MSM transmission. Or if a trans man who still has their vulva and vagina acquires HIV from their partner with a penis, that's considered a heterosexual transmission. Mm. But it's not because that's a trans man. You see what I'm saying? So if we, if we, A lot of times, especially in public health with epidemiology and biostatistics and things like that, we break people down and minimize them to their genitals and what they do with them. Right. As opposed to the systems and the social determinants of health outcomes. Right. So, again, my MSW. You're bringing me back to school. You're bringing me back to school. You hear it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I leverage my informal and formal educations to serve my career. Full stop. Yeah. And I have a bachelor's in business. So I use it all. I don't see the point of getting a degree you're not going to use. <laughs> totally. But really, the degrees, my master levels degrees, I did that more um, for my clients than for myself because the letters behind my name make people more comfortable paying my rate. Just because of the way in which our world uh-huh. is set up in order to prioritize academia more than Correct. like personal experience. Correct. I mean, I did learn some things, but a lot of things, a lot of what I learned just affirmed what I already knew. Right. And I felt good about that too. Right. So again, I leverage my formal and informal educations every day of my life. Yeah. To do all of the things. I get to use my creativity. I get to do, I mean, I make all my graphics, I edit all my video, I do all my own stuff. You know? You, you are very, very impressive to watch and to listen to. And it's really cool just seeing all the amazing things that you do. I, I really like really enjoy just like listening to you speak, which is really cool. Thank and you. not only are you so magnetic and so fantastic at public speaking, but you lead so many incredible workshops that have like 
real knowledge and power that you're like giving people, right? And so like, yeah. you, it's like from sex ed trivia to oral sex to rideology, aka an erotic fitness class, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dedicated to building, like st- yeah, to building stamina, increasing confidence and adding control to being on top. That's fucking brilliant. I've never heard of a class like that. So smart. And I would love for you to do like a mini oral sex 101 workshop for us right now for performing oral sex specifically on penises, right? I think like there, there are a lot of things that you could highlight here, but I'm just wondering what do the listeners need to know that you can maybe share like a few tidbits here and then what else would they really learn in depth in your workshop? Okay. Well, in both of my workshops, the um, oral sex on a penis is called lick and oral sex on a vulva is called lip service. Um, because you know, why not? Um, but oral sex is oral sex, oral technique is oral technique. And so we go over in both of those classes, there is a workbook for both classes. We go over the anatomy of the genitals, the anatomy of the mouth, hand, and throat. Um, we go over diet, hygiene, oral sex friendly positions, um, manual and oral stimulation of the genitals, and how to add sex toys to your oral sex game. So that's what we go over in the workshop. Wow. The biggest thing, I think the biggest takeaway is confidence and enthusiasm are the biggest, best things you can bring to your oral sex game. Um, Oral sex is performance art. Mm. And I think the goal of oral sex is to make your partner feel delicious. Like that, I'm talking about delicious, like finger licking good. Like you want your partner to feel like you've been waiting all day to put your mouth between their legs, right? And Sometimes we get in our head, specifically on penises, but in vulvas too. Like we get in our mind about, okay, I need to, okay, stroke the penis, cup the balls, do the this, do the, you know. And so then it becomes sort of mechanical um, and it becomes something you have to do, not something you get to do. Mm. And so to reframe and to kind of take the burden off of having to be great off top. I tell people oral sex is performance art and performance art needs a theme song. So to add confidence to your game, the easiest thing you can do is think of a song that makes you feel sexy. Now, uh, I do a lot of applied linguistics work in my work because words mean things. Okay, Mm. so when we think sexy, a lot of people have never felt sexy in their lives because they they define sexy as what other people can be, not what they can be. Mm. And that does a lot to our confidence. Right. Comparison. I I prefer that people drill down on the word sexy. What when we say sexy, what do we mean? When I say sexy, I mean confident, I mean beautiful, I mean powerful, I mean attractive, I mean desirable, I mean intelligent, funny, stylish, right? All of the things. And so when you can connect to yourself in other words that also mean sexy for you, you show up differently. So get a song in your head that makes you feel like that. Like when you get dressed and you know your outfit is popping and you have a good hair day. Like you just feel it. You and you walking down the street and that song that's in your head right then. Perform oral sex to that song. Mm. Not only does it do something just energetically for you, it also gives you a rhythm to perform to because the key to gag reflex control is breath control. So you have a rhythm now to perform to your breathing and all the things your partner is now going to match your breathing and all the things and the body rhythms will go together. You can hum into your partner's genitals, which adds a rumble and a vibration that feels amazing adds layers to the pleasure. You can mouth some of the lyrics to the song into their body. Be it, if it's on the mic, you can rock the tip of the mic and just mouth the lyrics into the, you know what I'm saying? If it's a vulva, you can just like go in deep and just kind of lift the words. So it just adds. And it's like, it's a, it's a cheat code because you feeling good. You in it with the song. So now you rocking the mic to the song or you rocking the headphones to the song and humming and breathing and your body, you should be performing oral sex with your entire body. That really gives me a whole new perspective on the way in which it, like this idea of you get to do this, like Mm -hmm. how lucky are we that we get to give our partner this kind of pleasure and if you're, in your head, you're framing it as your partner's pleasure. The way I teach, your, I frame it your as the pleasure. pleasure of the person performing. Totally. Because dudes be like, oh, that's right. You need to teach, teach these women how to please their man. First of all, I'm not only teaching women how to suck dick. Anybody that want to learn how to suck dick can, can Anyone learn. Anyone can 
I'm can teaching give a behavior. I'm teaching up. a sexual act. So anybody interested in sucking dick can come to this class. Anybody interested in riding dick can come to this class. Right. First of all. Secondly, I don't care about the person's pleasure that's receiving the oral sex. If you're not enjoying it, it doesn't matter. Mm. As the as the very first thing, you as have to be the thing, one. Like you need to be connected to the pleasure that you're providing. Right. And that's how it get, it's turned from something you got to do to something you get to do because you're enjoying it. If you're enjoying it, you'll do it more. If you're enjoying it, you'll put more into the performance. If you're enjoying it, it can also satisfy you. I tell people, if you have not reached orgasm from performing oral sex, your life is incomplete. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so while you potentially while using hands or a toy on yourself or... Possibly. So here's okay. the science and hell shit, right? So like if you're moving and you're grooving and you're performing oral sex, you're, you're getting you know aroused and stimulated as well. If you want to use a toy on yourself, on your own genitals, while you're performing on your partner, great, right? And you can reach orgasm that way. You reach orgasm with your partner's genitals in your mouth is an amazing experience. What happens is you sort of create this operant conditioning, this Pavlovian response. Like that felt really good last time. I'm going to do that again. Uh huh. And what happens is as your body starts to get that muscle memory in place, it may get to a point where you, you don't need the toys anymore. You just wow. created this circuit in your brain of giving and receiving pleasure because that's what operant conditioning is. That's what Pavlovian response is. And people don't think that they're going to talk about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and Pavlovian response in a blowjob class, but guess what? Here we are. <laughs> I have some homework to do. I feel like this is really, yeah, this is great. I think that makes a lot of sense. the science and the whole shit, right? And so when (laughs) you have the science and the whole shit, it just hits different because I use science to explain pleasure. And when you have, like we were talking earlier about layering informal and formal education, now you've gotten some formal education to go with the informal education that you've had this whole time before you got here. And it's going to build confidence. And that is why my tagline is connecting people to sexuality, health, education, and pleasure with confidence. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I feel like they're, they're real. that really makes sense with the confidence because when you show up in your body and you're feeling really, really good about yourself, that impacts all of your experiences by yourself and with other people. Mm-hmm. And so that totally resonates with me. And it shows up when you got your upright with your clothes on. Right. Walking down the street, having a conversation, it shows up differently. People think what I do is orgasms and rainbows, mm-hmm. right? Really, I'm a confidence coach, but I can't tell y'all that because that's not what people expect from me. Hmm. So your sexual confidence permeates every other kind of confidence you have. Because we're a right. very sexually, we're a very sexualized culture, but we're not a very sexually educated culture. And if education is power and knowledge is power and everything in the world is about sex except sex, sex is about power. Just let that sit there for a second. Then what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? Right. Like totally. that is that is what people, I think that's what people connect um, when they think of me. I hope that's what people connect to and what, what they remember about their interactions with me. I had a lady, um, I sat at a dinner table with her at a wedding three years ago, four years ago. And she saw me on a podcast and I was talking about confidence and how my confidence used to be rooted in my sexual ability. Hmm. And how now my confidence is not rooted in my sexual ability. It's not rooted in everything other than what I look like and everything other than what I can provide other people. It's rooted in my intelligence and my style and my sense of humor and like all of those things. It's not about what I look like. And she commented on the podcast. She was like, we were at a a dinner event four years ago. And I remember thinking that is a confident woman. Oh, wow. That feels, that must feel good. She was like, I remember thinking that you were confidence goals. Oh, that's really she, the best compliment. She follow me on social media. She didn't. We sat at a dinner table. She remembered you. And she commented and then now she follows me. But like, <laughs> you know, like that was like, to me, if that's what you remember, I'm doing my job. Totally. Yeah. And I'm sure that it just feeds your already like solid confidence that you have about yourself like you said well you know i think i i really try not to let other people's things matter to me because Mm. as a fat black girl in the south that shit hits different for a lot of different people 
Um, right. I, had, I had a video just go viral recently. Um, 4.7 million views on a, wow. on a video that an attendee of another workshop I was a guest in posted. And some of the people and the things that the people were saying, I was like, yo, I'm glad that I that I think I'm all right. Because they were like, who is all she right. getting on top of? Now she can't ride and get that big old girl down. They was calling me all kind of walruses and commenting on my appearance and my ability. It, it was just, I mean, people that don't know me from a can of paint going out of their way to be disrespectful and dismissive. Right. And I was just like, I live in a very affirming bubble. Mm. <laughs> and c- the comments, they say never read the comments, right? right? But the comments are like being a fly on the wall of people talking about you when you're not in the room. Right. Yes. Which means, which means it could go any way. So, oh my God. I'm so glad that you said that because there's so much. Yeah, of course. Like if you're in the public eye, right, there's going to be love, there's going to be hate, and there's going to be everything in between. And when I get hateful comments, I like to comment back, you know, someone's on the other end of this, right? <laughs> like, And usually people reply, you're sorry, that wasn't very nice. Like, I think that and not like that's your responsibility to talk to these mm-hmm. like hateful people. But I just think that it's interesting that when you get called out like that in a way that's like, hey, don't forget, like I'm a human being with feelings and um, you don't even need to say anything if you don't want to. I mean, and, and I I didn't say any, I, 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 I commented like, this is crazy that y'all are going out your way to disrespect somebody y'all don't know. And someone commented under my comment like, well, you can't ride dick and you can't get mad if people saying you can't ride dick. Da, 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 da. And I was like, and I replied to him because he replied to me. Right, right. And I was like, you really doubled down on the disrespect. I was like, you should be embarrassed, but you're obviously not that self-aware. Hmm. And I was like, I've gotten 16,000 followers in the last four days. Oh, wow. My email list is booming and so are my sales. So your your hate ass, your hateful ass opinion is just that, an opinion. Joke's on you. So keep it cute, my boy. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> That's what I said at the end. I'm like, keep it cute, my boy. Like, I don't have time for this. Like, this, yeah. it's a, the negativity is a fraction of the positivity. Right. And I really have to hold on to that because I don't want to be famous. If I'm really being honest with you. I feel like that too. It's like I don't want to do that shit. I've been popular my entire life. Yeah, I believe it. My entire life I have been popular. I am trying to be profitable. I want to be paid and impactful. I don't have to be famous. I want to be able to go to Walmart in my pajamas. But I can't I can't do that. Is a great way to say that. I I I feel the same exact way. I like see some of my friends who are in the sexual health space, and they have you know like half a million followers, and like Fox News is after them, and they are just like their name is in the headlines. And I'm just like, I just want to kind of. I I really love how you said that. Get paid and be impactful. Like that's, that's just ma- I don't need y'all to maintain. Know People yeah. hear my voice and know like here in Dallas. Dallas is a is a small town in a big city. So I can't go nowhere. I can't People say come up to you and want, and want you to chat with them. I mean, no, it'll be though they recognize me from you know from something that they've seen me on, or even when I'm in my mask, you know, they recognize they hear my voice. Oh, I know that voice. I'm just like, oh my god. You Is know it overwhelming? I, it, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, it it makes me happy though because that means that my work is getting out. You know, right. sometimes. With all of the FOSTA, SESTA, you know, minimizing on social media that happens with our accounts, it does feel good to know that someone is getting the information. Totally. And I don't feel negatively about people like recognizing you're coming up to me. It's just new. I'm going to get real with you all right now and talk about sex with ourselves, aka masturbation. Masturbation is an incredible way to feel good in your body really get to know your wants and needs, decrease stress, and get better sleep. Simply put, it brings us pleasure. Who doesn't love getting pleasure, especially in this super duper stressful world we're living in today? Something that personally brings me a lot of pleasure is Uberlube. I've been using Uberlube for years now, and I cannot recommend it enough. I use Uberlube because it lasts super long. I like that it's compatible with condoms, and you can use it for other purposes, like to prevent chafing, which athletes love. And it can even go in your hair to tame, detangle, smooth, and condition it. Pretty freaking cool if you ask me, and hairdressers think so too. If you want to give Uberlube a try, join me in using it for pleasure. Use code SEXEDWITHDB for 15% off at uberlube.com.
Magic Wand's story begins in 1968, a full year before we landed on the moon and about six months before bell bottoms were trendy the first time. This is when the Magic Wand, the original personal massager, was first introduced, and I am so glad it was. No one expected that this unassuming device would soon become one of the world's most recognizable products. The Magic Wand original exemplifies the phrase icon, and now it shares the spotlight with three equally impressive models. Magic Wand Plus, a corded variable speed massager, Magic Wand Rechargeable, a cordless multifunction device, and the first ever Magic Wand Mini, a new, compact, adorable, rechargeable massager. Every product that bears the Magic Wand name features the legendary power and historic pleasure that took the world by storm more than half a century ago. My personal favorite Magic Wand is the original. They sell millions every year and for good reason. It's powerful and brings so much pleasure in all the right places. Want to get a discount on this amazing powerhouse? Go to sexedwithdb.com slash magic wand to learn more. We talk a lot about sex ed, but when we're shopping for products to support our sexual wellness, exploration, and expression, we head to the experts at Lion's Den. For 50 plus years, Lion's Den has been a leader in adult products. Whether you want to explore a new kink or add a little romance to your evening, Lion's Den has something for all. Each location is brightly lit and staffed with the very best experts in pleasure, passion, and romance so you can feel comfortable and confident in your purchases. Lion's Den is offering our listeners 15% off your purchase in-store and online using code SEXEDWITHDB at lionsden.com. Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Jennifer Lincoln, board certified OBGYN, and you may know me from social media where I spend a lot of my time educating about everything reproductive health. This podcast is called Let's Talk About Down There, and that's what I'm doing. I am talking about down there with no shame, no stigma, a lot of fun, and a lot of education. And why? Because when we talk about these things, we educate and we empower ourselves. Call in, leave a question, and know that it's okay to have questions about your body, and we're going to answer them. Transitioning a little bit to your DEI work, um, okay. you work in, you know, corporate and collegiate spaces and in these spaces, you know, you have a quote on your website that I really liked, which is you're determined to eradicate stigma and improve sexual responsibility. Yes. And I'm wondering, what does this really look like in your sessions on the ground? Um, so on college campuses, it's very unique because sometimes I'm doing work for the faculty. Sometimes I'm doing work for the students. Mm-hmm. We have more queer people on the planet than ever before. And a lot of them are in college campuses and in spaces. And I, I try to empower faculty to uh, create affirming, safer spaces in their classrooms. So I teach them about sex, gender, and orientation and how they're three different things and navigating pronouns and blah, 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 so that they can come from a harm reduction standpoint and, and support their students. Um, in the student realm, I am booked by like the fraternities, the sororities, and the, the student groups. Um, to do like sex trivia, ask a sexologist. I have taught rideology at a campus, <laughs> on a campus. Um, and so in sensual, I did a, a sensual intelligence workshop for a survivors group um, on a campus wow. um, because typically when we have suffered or survived a violation, specifically a sexual violation, it gets harder to reconnect to sexuality and sex as pleasurable. And so... Um, Sensual intelligence separates sex from sensuality, and sensuality is identifying and embracing non-sexual pleasure through all six of the senses. So it makes pleasure accessible and achievable, and you start to move through the world with an intentional gratitude of like the low-hanging fruit of this pleasure, because pleasure, the definition of pleasure is experiencing great joy and excitement. It has nothing to do with sex, but we've conflated the two. So sensual intelligence separates the two. So now you start to reconnect to joy and excitement and you become a more sensual being and when you're a sensual being having a sexual experience now you're experiencing sex through all six of the senses so it's a layered experience you're adding layers to the pleasure and it makes you more receptive to the more than 18 different kinds of orgasms that the human body has to offer um, 18 more than 18 um, wow. and then i talk about those i just briefly go over the 18 of 18 of the many and then I, um, I expressly talk about three and how to access them with and without a partner. And that is the squirting orgasm, the pelvic orgasm, and the nipple orgasm. So one for, one for vulvas, one for penises, and then one for everyone. Um, and then I, I also have a workshop called The Big O where we talk about the, the 18 different kinds of orgasms and how to access them with and without a partner. 
Of course you do. I'm not surprised. It just looks like science and whole shit, right? I'm talking to people, empowering people around their sexuality, around what pleasure can look like and how it is a part of our everyday lives. Um, and then you have the corporate spaces where I'm teaching sex, gender, and orientation, navigating pronouns, sex and aging, sex and disability. Um, I've taught, uh, I, I've been booked by Meta twice, and one of those was a panel discussion around mental health and queer spaces uh, in the workplace. Um, I've taught, I've done T-Mobile with their storefront employees on navigating pronouns for people that just want to buy a phone. Like, don't misgender someone, they just want a phone. You know what I'm saying? Like, so like, that that's kind of what it looks like. But I specifically focus on educators, social workers, and health professionals because those are some of the most sex negative spaces that I've encountered. And I feel really? like in what yeah, ways? Like in education, you know, the compulsory heteronormativity hmm. in education, social work, and in the healthcare field, there is a white, cisgender, straight male default until otherwise identified. Right. And if we are going to create spaces that are safe and and we're reducing harm and eradicating stigma, the people that are the leaders in those spaces need to be better educated. And so for educators, I do different workshops for different age groups. So I have um, K through two, three through five, six through eight, nine through 12 and collegiate for educators, because then they give you the age appropriate ways to kind of discuss gender and sexuality and all the things. Um, and then social workers, because again, underserved markets are largely gender and sexuality expansive. And then health professionals, because there are only two medical books that include the clitoris. Right. I talked to an OBGYN in earlier today who had no sexual health and pleasure information outside of the reproductive tract. Right. Yeah. So like there is a space for us to leverage, again, our informal and formal educations in a way that can empower other people to create safer spaces for people we've never met yet. Hmm. How do you find time to do <laughs> all of this? It has to go on the calendar. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're very goes on the calendar. Literally, my mom was like, can you cut my hair? And I was like, did you put it on the calendar? <laughs> you have to just sign me up because I won't attend if it's not on my calendar. No, listen, personal, professional, whatever. It's both. I'm yeah. not doing it. If yeah. it's not on the calendar. And I don't have an assistant currently. Um, but I am working on um, putting systems in place to help me have more time in the day because I'm a partner and a parent uh, and a professional. So there are lots of demands on my time and attention. I am getting an intern this summer. I'm so excited nice. um, from my public health program. They're giving me an intern. Amazing. So I'm going to get to train up some other people on how to like do the back end stuff because people see the front end stuff. They see the pleasure professional. They see all the, you know, sex toy Saturday and I'm teaching at Tulane and I'm out here at Johns Hopkins and I'm no. What, You're busy. How, how do you get there though? Like what, what right. goes into that? What are the steps that Correct. go into place? Yeah, Correct. absolutely. So, so I definitely, um, I definitely feel like I drop the ball often. Um, and I'm working on that, you know, that little guilt that comes with that. Um, but pitching, being more organized. I mean, my squirrels have squirrels. Okay. Then, you know, my squirrels have squirrels. So it's, I'm easily distracted by shiny objects. Like I am, it's an undertaking. It's an undertaking. So, But like, you're just a creative brain. Like, I don't know, maybe the world, like, and the systems that are in place just like don't fit you. Like you don't have to, you know. I systems to, cre- to fit me. Like I am right. creating systems. Like I don't go to the grocery store anymore. I order all the groceries. Right. From Too places. overwhelming. Or- yeah. No, and then like when you order online, it like suggests, well, these are the things you always buy. So I can just check off. All the shit Easier. I normally buy and go like I, I order from three different places and then they just descend upon the house. I make sure I order when my kids are home so they can put it away. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really try to streamline things. I have an amazing partner. He's so helpful, Aww. you know, because otherwise I wouldn't have a partner. I'd just be single because if they're not helping, then what are they doing? Right. Have really amazing, good point. Ama- I, have, I have friends that when we go out of town, they have to get babysitters, even though they have whole ass husbands at home. No. I'm like, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Now I know I can leave my house for a week and my kids, I mean, and I have older kids too, but we have a little one. And I know when I get home, my daughter Hendricks will have all her, all her fingers and toes. You know, she will have had breakfast. She may have had chocolate cake for breakfast, but she had breakfast. <laughs> right. You know what I'm I saying? Mean, that must the feel good. Older, they can, you know, that's another thing too. People think they see, oh, you have your partner and a parent and blah, blah, blah. 
My children are 26, 24, 19, and 7. Oh, wow. Okay, you so 26, kids. 24, 19 are the built-in babysitters for the 7. I don't, I don't have to actively parent four children. Right. And parenting adults looks very different. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, and, and 26 and 7, like, that's a huge gap. I'm sure that they have, like, a really sweet relationship. They are ridiculous. When we pull up from the, to the house and Hendrick sees Jackie, that's a 26-year-old, sees Jackie's car out front. <gasps> My sister! She, <laughs> she can't get out the car fast enough. That's so cute. And I'm just like, great, because I'm leaving. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Wow. Yeah, you are a marvel to me, clearly. Like, yeah, goal, confidence goals, like parent goals, partner goals, career goals in so many ways. Um, you clearly, you know, as we talked about, have been doing so much. You're you're so like rich with knowledge and information and getting people to be interested in sexual and reproductive health and pleasure mm-hmm. and all the ways that people can gain pleasure, not just through sex. And I'm wondering if there's a specific sex ed topic that you just get so warm and feel cozy about when you teach, you know, how, and, and how, how did you come to love talking about this topic? Honestly, all of it. All <laughs> just of the it. whole thing. I was, I was on a podcast once and the person asked me um, if I could, if I could, any person living or dead, if they could get comprehensive sex ed, who would I choose? And I thought about it for a long time because no one's ever asked me no shit like that. And I said King James. Because if King James had gotten comprehensive sexuality education, the Bible would look real different. Oh, it's Bible stuff. I was like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he, King James uh, is one of the most most popular interpreters of the Bible. He's also Okay, I'm uh, Jewish, so I don't I don't okay. know much about but I'm the saying, Bible. Like, you know, and, and and also in the United States, we're like an ambiently Christian country, even though not for real. Right. And so that's why I said King James, because when you think about the impact that Christianity right. has had. And how many on, people read on that. On colonization, on the slave trade, mm. on like all of these things that are really horrific times in our, you know, even 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 with um, Judaism, like the, the, the Holocaust and all that was not run by Jews. Right. It was run by people that thought something different and were wrong. Right. Right. And if the people, those people that 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 those ideologies were framed after were probably Christian. So even in that space, even in that, in that space, if King James had gotten comprehensive sexuality education, the world would look mad different. Right. And so that's That's an interesting answer. I I mean, and so those are the things I don't have a specific topic around sexuality that I like to talk about. Human sexuality is so expansive and all encompassing. I can connect the absence or presence of human sexuality education to anything, to school shootings, to to abortion law, everything. The people these shooting up schools, if they had gotten comprehensive sex ed starting in pre-K, they would understand expressing negative emotion. They would understand boundaries and autonomy and respect and responsibility. And that would look different when their feelings are hurt. They wouldn't need to go shoot up a school because they would understand how to navigate negative emotion. Mm. People think sex ed is just intercourse instruction. And it's it's so much more holistic. Than that. Yeah. And so I think that I just get excited about it because when people, when I see the light bulb go off over people's heads, it is the most, is the most intense non-sexual pleasure I can experience. And so that is what I love doing. It does, it's not a specific topic. I can, I talk about sexuality like it's Tupperware because it, it is to me, you know, and if we make these conversations regular, because the concept of normal is subjective. It's normal for my son to go, mom, can you please get your dildos out the sink so I can wash the dishes? Right. I'm sure that's not normal for most people. Right. You know what I'm saying? So the concept of normal is subjective. But if we can make the typical experience be something that is more encompassing when it comes to human sexuality, education, health, hygiene, pleasure, all of these different things that come together, the perfect storm to be sexuality and sexual expression, the world would look so different. And I am wholly engaged on planting seeds for trees I'm never going to sit under. Mm. I am determined to be an ancestor. I, like that I am determined to be someone that the children of the future learn about. And you you already are. <laughs> <laughs> you already are. And that definitely comes through. And yeah, that, I really like that metaphor. I think that's really powerful. And I totally agree. It's, it's really hard to answer just one thing because it's a, it's a, it's a quilt. 
and it every is. piece of it is necessary in every order thread, to have a rich every, life. The, you know, it's a tapestry and every single thread and weave right. and pattern is integral for it to be what it is. Totally. Yeah, completely. It's like asking me, I do have a favorite kid. And so it's like, like asking me to pick a favorite kid. I do have a favorite kid. <laughs> you can't. You won't. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what are you, what are you working on right now? I would love to hear more about your incredibly smart, sometimes hilarious, really, really just on the money merch. And like, this is clearly a part of your business model. Like, tell me what's going on here. What kind of shirts do you have? Tell the people everything. Well, I have shirts, uh, shirts, hoodies, and tote bags. I'm starting to do uh crew neck sweaters too, because I like how the collar pops out. Like, you know. Um, so, um, all of the t-shirts, the goodie gear, um, pleasure professional is a newer design. Um, I have some that say sex real big and they have educator going through the middle. So it's like, I have sex educator, sex therapist, sex positive and sex coach. Um, and so like all of that, I love the goodie gear things. Um, but what right now, what I'm working on is I'm trying to get sponsorships for my rideology tour. Cool. A tour. Um, tour. Yes. I want to do an international tour. And I say international because I'm supposed to be in Toronto and Montreal. <laughs> That's international. Right. <laughs> um, and I've, I've been invited to Australia. Oh, cool. now, apparently there's a lot of goody gang in Australia. So I'm, I might I might have to make that happen. Awesome. Um, but yeah, the tour is what I'm working on. I've never, um, I guess I've never pitched anything. So having like a sponsorship deck and like asking people for like financial support to make this tour happen um, is it's mind blowing for me because that means people can have an opportunity to tell me no, mm. which I don't like. No, is not a friend of mine. I don't know her. We didn't go to school together. Um, <laughs> I don't like it. Um, so I'm working on that. I also, this is the first time I'm saying this out loud anywhere. I had a meeting yesterday with an amazing cosmetic chemist. Oh, who is a Goody Gang OG, and she wants to create a lubricant line for me. No. And so we are making a Goody Lubricant. I don't know what I'm calling it yet. I don't know if I'm calling it gloss or splash or I don't know. But um, it is a, I'm going to have a water-based lubricant and a silicone lubricant. Wow. And it will be available for pre-sale in September because we're already doing the testing and the packaging and like all the organic things and stuff. Very exciting. So it'll be it'll be available pre-sale in September, which is Sexual Health Month, which is like Christmas for us. Perfect, so yeah. I mean, so yeah, so that's happening. That is a thing. I, I've never actually said that out loud anywhere. So this is. I'm so glad that it's here that you're saying it. That's very exciting. And so I'm really super fucking happy about that. And I'm trying to get a finger vibe created because I love wow. a finger vibe. It's super fucking versatile. Um. I love finger vibes because they don't, you know, sex toys don't have a gender identity. They don't have an orientation. They can be used on any Anybody. body part. With the exception of butt stuff that has to be flared based. But, you know, right. in general. And a finger vibe can be used everywhere. Nipples, mouths, penises, vulvas, anuses. It adds a little rumble to the choke. Like, it's a great situation. So, wow. working on that too. I'm so invested in your success. I'm very happy to hear about that. Um, and we can talk offline about this, but partnerships and sponsors and ad decks, that's my bread and butter. So we can do some skill trading. Yeah. I have amazing sponsors for this podcast. I can hook you up with my sponsors. Shout out to, uh, Lion's Den and Future Method and Uber Lube and, uh, the amazing Magic Wand. They're one of my sponsors. I love wands. Oh my God. Uh, let's talk after happy to hook you up with everyone I know, and we can do some skills trade and that would yes, be great. Thank you. Of course. You um, as I said, I'm a business model that isn't, that's burgeoning. I'm not gonna say it's not established, but right. it's burgeoning. It is I'm happy to help in whatever way possible. As I said, I'm invested in your success. I think you're so <laughs> wonderful. So that's very exciting for us uh, as our, our new partnership kind of begins after this podcast. Yay! And, um, you know, say where folks can find you, where people can follow you and get info on your stuff, on your workshops. Well, my name is Goody Howard. That is my legal name. Uh, <laughs> because people are like, is that your real name? It's my yeah. legal name. It's on my taxes. Um, <laughs> so, that's how you know. That's how you know. Um, and uh, everyone asks Goody things. So I am Ask Goody everywhere. AskGoody.com is the website. Info at AskGoody.com is the email address. Ask Goody on all social media platforms. Anywhere likes can be clicked. 
Um, I'm Ask Goody. That's A S K G O O D Y. Everywhere. Amazing. <laughs> and as a follower of you and a consumer of your content, I can say everyone who's listening should go get your Instagram out right now, get your social media out, your social media of choice, find Ask Goody and follow her. And Goody, this has been so fantastic. Thank you so much for being here. I have another thing for you. More things. So the the website, your your podcast is Sex Ed with DB, right? Yes. Okay. So if your listeners go to askgoody.com and buy something, they can use code Sex Ed for 20% off. Oh, amazing. That's a fantastic. Di- so did you all hear that? Pay attention. <laughs> Askgoody.com. Use code sex ed for 20% off of what Goody has to offer. Yeah. And that's not for live events, but it okay. does count for workshop replays, Goody gear and pleasure tools. Yes. And please go check out the Goody gear. It's so phenomenal. <laughs> I can't wait to buy some stuff myself. Uh, but Goody, once again, I'm so glad that we're connected. I'm so glad you're in the world. I'm so glad to learn from you. Thank you so much for being on today. Thank you for having me. This was awesome. Our creator, host, and executive producer is me, Danielle Bezalow. Our producer and communications lead is Catherine Cohen. Our associate producer and communications coordinator is Sadie Luigi. Our marketing coordinator is Kate Fiala. Our music theme is by Hook Sounds. Thanks so much to our featured guests, partners, and listeners. Want to partner with us? Email us at sexedwithdb at gmail.com. For more sex ed content, follow us on Instagram at sexedwithdbpodcast and on TikTok at sexedwithdb. For exclusive content and to submit an anonymous sex ed question, check out my new podcast on Fridays, Curious Sex Ed, hosted with Mariah Caudillo of Sex Ed Files. Go to buymeacoffee.com slash curiousexed to learn more. See you next time.